YouTube. And I just got back a little bit ago from my uh, scouting trip and I want to kind of go over what I found this weekend and what I didn't find. So let me grab some maps and zoom this camera in and I'll show you exactly what I found and where I found it. Okay, this is the area that I looked at. And once again, this map kind of shows better the wheat field over here. There's large fields over here that I assumed were wheat, but they were not. They were just CRP. All this stuff in here that looks like it would be grasslands was four foot tall CRP weed fields and the deer were bedding everywhere out in it. Uh, but like even in cattails, they were orientating off of islands and stuff and points. So without a doubt, uh, we kind of talked about this in my first video. I thought this triple funnel would be absolutely outstanding and i if you remember right i said i'll bet i'll find a creek crossing here probably on this side here and probably one going across this little creek well the little creek was actually dry but i did find a major crossing right here and probably the two best crossings that i found on this creek were right up here going across here and one immediately in this oxbow about halfway down the oxbow Probably the first bedding area, the really, some of the better beds I found were right in here. And then I, that scrape where I set up the camera was actually right in here. Now what I think's happening is these deer are, are coming down these funnels and, and they're bedding in this oxbow right here. Uh, I didn't have time to get over on this side and look on that side because as I stated in one of my videos, I usually find the better bucks actually preferred to bed on the outside bend of oxbows. Uh, but in this case, the majority of the beds that I found were over here. So th this was definitely an area I picked out a tree over here. And I also found a tree over here that I'll probably set up on because most of the time the wind's coming out of the south. Uh, since the road's up this way, I'm going to assume that most of the buck pattern's going to be coming out of the bedding here towards this way or up here. Okay, so that was definitely one area. Another very interesting area that I found, and you can see right here, I said this would be a funnel, but right here off of this point, there's some brush out here. It really don't show. Uh, there was That's where I actually found another scrape and a whole bunch of rubs. And this don't show it near as well as I would like for it to do, but there were just big trees out all throughout the CRP. And I literally walked through every single one of these that I could see and I'll tell you, most of them didn't have any kind of sign. Hog sign, yes. But only a few had actual scrapes and rubs on them. And most of those were orientated off of these points. I found another great spot right over here. The deer were actually coming off of this point right here and crossing this fence and coming down. And I assume coming over to this wheat field over here. But this was a, a really great spot here. Uh... The best place that I found, without a doubt. A major creek crossing here, but the best actual buck beds that I found, and I found three of three or four of them in this area and bunches of, of rubs, was right here. This is the spot in the video where I said I'm going to put a false scrape and a licking branch and set a camera up. I, I think I've changed my mind. I'm just going to watch that creek crossing because I know any buck bedding in this area is going to eventually cross that creek. Uh, and that creek crossing is probably where I'm going to set up to kill this bucket if there's one in here that I want. So this was absolutely my, probably my favorite spot to hunt that I can get into easy. Uh, I did walk all these other oxbows and I, like I said, I found sign in every one of these major doe bedding right here. Uh, that's important to know. Uh, I like to identify where I jump does in late season because that tells me that's a spot that they're comfortable being in during gun season which is in here in Texas, that's two months of our bow season. So I know that the does boating here in January, right after gun season, that tells me this is a safe spot for them. Well, guess where the bucks are going to show up? You got it, where the doe feels safe. So you can see that this funnel right here is going to be outstanding for any buck coming in out of this wheat field or coming from down the creek here, checking these doe bedding areas. I found a lot of doe bedding in this area here, okay? I jumped a lot of deer right here in this corner. Unfortunately, there's a private land stand here. 
and, and I, most of the deer I've seen were on the private land, but there was a lot of deer and sign all up and down this tree line like I thought there would be, okay? Uh, so every area that I have circled in here, I absolutely found buck bedding. So that, that goes to show me, and it, hopefully it'll show you, that you can narrow down your, your scouting by really studying these maps first, these aerial photographs and maps. I found plenty of buck sign in here. Now, one of the big surprises of the day was I was going to walk this line back out, but instead I noticed a rub line going right through the middle of the CRP, and you can't really see it, but there's a few tall trees here. I found so many rubs going right across here and it led me into this area over here and on the back side of this oxbow right here, actually it was probably right here on this, this little break in the tree line, I found a congregation of beds and rubs here so and a tall tree. So I'll probably scout and set up a tree here. Uh, so, so to summarize what I found, all the funnels are definitely productive. I would hunt any of these funnels during the cruising phase. The buck bedding, panned out just about everywhere I looked. This one, and right in here, is probably my two favorite buck bedding areas that, that I found. I didn't get much time to scout this oxbow right here and it really looked good. Same with this oxbow over here. Uh, I didn't get a lot of time, so I will definitely go back into this. I didn't get to scout any, hardly any of this. I walked through it real quickly. Uh, I, to tell you the truth, I spent most of my time out in the CRP stuff trying to figure out what they're doing. Uh, and off of this point, there's major doe bedding right here too. Off of this point right here, the fence line runs right here. This tree right there, I will have a stand in that tree. Uh, there was a major trail coming out of this doe bedding right to that wheat field. Now, why do I sit up on doe trails? Well, once again, when the bucks are with the does, guess who's going to be following those does to that wheat field? You got it. Uh, so setting up here with this coming off this with the southwest wind, hopefully it'll blow past. They, they seem to be bedding right up on this little point right here, bending the creek. Uh, with a southeast wind, it should keep my wind out of their way and yet give these does confidence that they've got the wind to their to their face going into this wheat field. So that, that'll be a dynamite setup come uh, late October, early November. But if I had to hunt one spot and one spot only, it would definitely be this creek crossing right here because of two reasons. One, I can catch any buck coming across that creek crossing and I'm going to set up on the west end of it on this side of the creek here or any buck coming through this funnel. I, I pretty much got him too. Uh, so this, this is probably my favorite area so far that I found. I'm going to drop a camera here. I've already set a camera up here on this scrape. We'll see what pans out over in here. I've got a good, I mean, the, the rubs and the scrapes that I found in the tracks were pretty significant there. So I think there's probably a good buck in that area. But anyway, I spent, I don't know, six hours out there. I probably walked eight to 10 miles. I covered a lot of ground. It was a lot of in thick brush. The brush in these areas here, it don't really show, but this is inch to two inch, uh, eight to 10 foot, saplings that have thorns and it was just there's no way you could get an arrow through here and that's why the deer are bedding here when the pressure comes up nothing's getting in there so you're going to have to catch them coming and going in and out of these areas in little open spots as you zoom in right here you can kind of see this open spot right here that's an area that i'll look at but right over here you can see this funnel along this creek and you can kind of see it the cover really narrows down right here that creek crossing was right in here, and I know that if I set up in here, I can cover this funnel. So, and like I said in the video, the deer actually do travel through this CRP because it's four foot tall. But I, I jumped the majority of the deer, and most of the beds I found were deep in this thick stuff. Uh, so that's where I'll, I'll focus my attention. But anyway, I hope the videos were kind of helpful. It's a learning experience for me, but once again, Planning ahead and really analyzing these maps before you get out there is important because I could have been wasting a lot of time out in here. Uh, you know, I probably did waste a lot of time walking around here, but I wanted to see what was out in that CRP. Uh, but most of the sign that I found in the CRP was orientating off of these points, these little clumps of trees, especially in anything like this. There was a lot of bedding in that. So I hope this was helpful to y'all and I will make more videos when I go out and check this camera and I set some more cameras out. 
And uh, as I set up a mineral lick, now someone asked me where I'd probably set up a mineral lick in here. Uh, I, I'm going to guess, for me, I will use this creek as access, so I will probably... Oh, you know, I don't know if I will, but if I do, it'll be off of a funnel type situation where I can get in here and uh, and set these up without disturbing the area. Probably somewhere in here, I would like to have a mineral lick, maybe on this side of the creek, uh, because I know that bucks will eventually get over there. But, you know, we'll see. I, I, I This was a big area, it was a lot to cover. I learned a lot the first trip. The next time I go in, I'll definitely be prepping trees here, here, probably down here and in here. Uh, I'll probably work this backside some more. I'll probably even prep this one tree that I found off, off in this area. I don't know exactly. I'd have to get my GPS coordinates. But uh, that's probably what I'll do the next time I go into that. So anyway, leave your comments, your tips. Uh, if you like something, I'm sorry about the camera work. You know, I suck at it. I'm, <laughs> I'm an old fat dude, and sometimes I don't hold my camera, I guess, upside right. And I tried to flip it before I uploaded, but it just didn't work. So hopefully you'll be able to get some good information out of this series.